My name is Fred Lapola, and I'm a librarian here at NYU Langone Health. Today, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the NYU Langone Health AI Studio. So today, we'll just be looking at what the NYU Langone Health AI Studio is, and we'll take a brief tour. So hopefully, by the end of this video, you'll have a sense of how to navigate the studio and understand how to use the various controls to efficiently utilize the resources available to you here at NYU Langone Health. So NYU Langone Health has entered a partnership with Microsoft for a private LLM instance that can be accessed through the AI Studio. This can be used privately, including with private information, and does not in any way use the information you enter to train the model or share that information online or with Microsoft. This means that it's possible to use the NYU Langone Health AI Studio for patient information, NYU Langone proprietary information, and any private proprietary work. To gain access to the NYU Langone Health AI Studio, please apply for access, which can be done at hslguides.med.nyu.edu slash AIHSL slash PAU forms. Actually jump over there just so you're aware. You can see that here. And if you were to be just on the regular library homepage, you could click on subject guides and it will be right here at the top under AI and healthcare and request forms. There you can also request to see the to meet with the experts from the predictive analytics unit during their office hours, uh, register a project for more involved support from the predictive analytics team, as well as uh, request access for the API. So some examples of times one might use the AI Studio, maybe for summarizing free text, as in the case of patient responses to a questionnaire extracting information from documents like physician visit notes, generating first drafts of documents and letters, and proofreading and getting revision suggestions for non-public documents. There are some limitations. The NYU Langone Health AI Studio does not search online for information. There are what are called token limits, and so a token is about four letters or one syllable or one short word, and depending on the model you use, the token limit is between 4,000 and 32,000. Um, and also, a AI can always create what are called hallucinations, which are falsehoods or fabrications that can be pretty convincing looking. So whenever we work with any AI tool, we do want to really critically evaluate what we're seeing in the output. <clears throat> Jumping over to the NYU Langone Health AI Studio, we see a few different panes. We've got our conversation pane, the Ask NYU Langone Chat GPT pane, Submit and Clear Chat as well as options for the model, temperature, output, and system message. The conversation box is where your prompts and answers will print out. So if you ask NYU Lingo and ChatGPT, that's where you will post the actual prompts for the AI system, and then they'll print out up in the conversation section. Moving over, we have three different model options here at NYU Lingo and Health currently. GPT-3.5, which is technically 3.5, GPT-4, and GPT-4-32K. GPT-4 is newer and per Microsoft can solve more difficult and complex questions than GPT-3.5, and GPT-4-32K is the newest offering and can handle many more tokens than the previous versions. That said, GPT-3.5 is much less resource intensive and will save the institution funds as well as having less of an environmental footprint. So when in doubt, I would personally recommend trying out 3.5 to see if that's going to meet your needs, since this will be the most efficient use of your resources. And then if not, you can always try increasing the model to see if that will solve your issues. Moving on, we have the temperature. And this basically refers to how creative or precise a given answer is. A higher temperature introduces more randomness. And so what this will mean is it may be more appropriate for cases such as generating new text or generating new ideas, where we want the AI to be a bit more creative in its output. A lower temperature is going to be more exact and more precise, and might be better for things like coding or things where we're expecting a very precise response. Also, it's worth noting, if you put the temperature too high, the results tend to be more or less gibberish. This might be a little bit hard to see on the video, but the results we have here are not the most legible from human standards. Next, we have the output max tokens. This is, again, roughly equivalent to four letters per token or a short word or syllable. Using more tokens will require more resources, again. 
And it's also good to think about what is the actual response length you need. So if you're writing a draft letter, you might not want it to carry on for pages upon pages. And so you might consider setting the length to be a bit shorter with the tokens. Finally, the system message is space to assign a role to the AI. So often it can be useful to specify that role to provide context and tailor your response. We might use this section to create a general role and set of instructions that then we can continuously add new data to be analyzed and the AI will refer to its role and uh, act accordingly. And that might be easier than typing out the actual prompt each time with the data that we're adding to be uh, transformed in some way. So Microsoft's guidance, they suggest a few use cases for this. Some may be specifying tasks and how they should be completed. Others may be defining scope, limitations and tone, providing syntax, styling and format, clarifying difficult use cases and providing examples of thought processes, and adding guardrails such as preventing copyright infringement. So here on the screen I have as an example adding in a system message. You are extracting information from after visit summaries. Use only information from within the summary text. From the text provide medication names, dosage, and time to take the medication and table. And what I've done is I've copied in a bulk of text just to show what that raw text looks like originally. We can see here we've got this list of information of medication names, when to take them. And then conveniently, because of that system message, the AI has provided the results in a table. So this has been a brief overview of the NYU Langone Health AI Studio. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, by all means, feel free to reach out at the email generativeai at nyulangone.org. And we'll be happy to discuss your project further.